Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you three tips on how to make powder foundations work. So if you have a certain age, actually scratch that, regardless of age, we all have different skin concerns. Someone can be 28, can have skin concerns that someone that's 48 doesn't have and vice versa. So whether you're 28 or 88, I'm gonna be giving you tips on how to make powder foundations work on skin that tends to be a little bit more textured, whether that is signs of aging or it's large pores or it's acne scars, anything that causes the skin not to be perfectly smooth, unfortunately, powder products can kind of accentuate that. So powder foundations, while they have so many great benefits of being easy and quick to apply, uh, being pretty long wearing because they tend to control oil and stay matte throughout the day. Um, it can be challenging when you are dealing with skin that has a bit more texture and getting them to just look nice and pretty and natural on the skin. So I'm going to give you three simple steps, simple tricks and tips that I feel like can really help achieve that. Today's video is sponsored by Miraness Cosmetics. The powder foundation that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate these tips and tricks is the Skin Clone Mineral Powder Foundation by Miraness. Before we get started, I do really wanna thank Miraness because if you've been watching my channel the last six months, you've seen other videos I've done in collaboration with them. And if you've noticed those videos, I really try to create the content to be very valuable and educational. So I'm so thankful that they allow me to do that and take these sponsored videos and just give me full creative control and say, create a video that you think your uh, audience is going to learn from and enjoy and incorporate our products into it. And I just wanna thank them for that freedom because it really allows me to create content that I think you guys still can learn so much from. Um, while being in a sponsored video. And I'm really, really thankful for my partnership with them. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first step actually is not makeup related, it's skincare related. When you are applying any type of makeup really, you really wanna make sure that your skin is in its prime optimal condition, but specifically with powder products, especially powder foundations, because a powder foundation is a heavy powder product, right? It is a product that is designed to give coverage like a liquid foundation, except it's in the form of the powder. So it's going to be a lot heavier than say a loose translucent setting powder. So all powders are not created equal, guys. Typically the heavier, more full coverage, the um, more you're going to have to make sure that your skin is prepped so that it doesn't accentuate fine lines or show um, texture in the skin or make the skin appear dehydrated. So anytime I'm applying a powder foundation, I really, really, really wanna take the extra steps to make sure that my skin is ready to receive that. <laughs> I mean, basically what it comes down to is creating the most smooth canvas and most hydrated canvas for your foundations. So if you have an exfoliating product, whether it's something like a gentle daily cleanser or it's something that's a little bit more abrasive, like a mask that you do once or twice a week, you really wanna make sure that you've exfoliated your skin. So either the night before or the morning of, you wanna exfoliate your skin so that your skin is just in its prime, most optimal, smooth state. Then you wanna make sure that you moisturize your skin and you apply your foundation quickly enough to where your skin still feels like it has moisturizer on it. Now, you don't wanna go in and apply it immediately before the moisturizer has had any time to absorb into the skin because then what you might run into is the powder foundation looking streaky against that moisture. Um, but you don't wanna allow the moisturizer to completely absorb into the skin to where your skin feels bone dry. Um, so if you have a moisturizer that's a bit more lightweight, mixing a facial oil into your moisturizer is a great, great tip and trick. So I'm gonna show you that. So I'm using a moisturizer that is a very, very sheer lightweight moisturizer. It actually dries to like a powder-like finish. It's very, very lightweight. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of face oil and I'm just gonna do a t the tiniest, ooh, that was a mess. I'm just gonna do the tiniest bit. Um, I typically don't wear a face oil in the mornings, um, but if I'm doing a powder foundation or I'm wearing a lot of powder product, I might do that to really just help the powder set nicely on the skin and look more natural. So I'm just gonna apply this all over my skin. I do have concealer, so I'm gonna kind of be cautious of that. And I, for the sake of timing, I'm just gonna kind of rub this in really, really well. So it kind of um, speeds up the absorption process. The next tip I have is application and the tool that you use to apply it. Before we get into that, I wanna show you the Miraness uh, Skin Clone Mineral Foundation. So what I like about this foundation is it does have an SPF of 15. I like that it's a full coverage foundation, but you can manipulate the coverage with the applicator that you use. And I'll speak a bit about that in just a second. This is how the product comes. You open it and it comes with a little sponge that sits here above this plastic um, little case. And then you lift it to find the product underneath. Totally honest with you guys, I've 
very rarely use the sponges that ever come in powder foundations. Um, I used to when I was in my teens, actually, in early 20s, and I would apply powder foundations, I would use the sponge. That is going to give you the most coverage. If you are looking for the most coverage, the sponge is the way to go. If you are um, looking for good coverage, and actually you can still get full coverage from a brush, but you maybe want to control the amount that you apply a little bit better and kind of work your way up to that coverage, I recommend using a brush. Now I have three brushes here to show you. So the first brush is a big, fat, soft, fluffy powder brush. This is going to do the best job of applying a light, sheer veil of this product. So if I want a lighter application, this is the way to go. Now if I want more coverage, but I want to be able to control my blendability a bit more better, a bit more better than I would with a sponge, uh, brushes like this would work. So as you can tell, these are more dense. Um, both They're very, very similar in terms of how they're going to apply the product. The difference is that this one has a contour and it's a little bit softer. So I'm actually going to use this on one side of the face and I'm going to use this on the other to kind of talk you through the differences between going with either brushes like this. Now I will say this, you can certainly apply a powder foundation on top of a liquid foundation, but just be aware of what you're doing. Essentially what you're doing is you're putting foundation on, you're letting it set, and then you're going and putting more foundation on. And I think because people look at powder foundations as a powder, it's very, very different than a setting powder. So if you're going to do that, just know that you're doing it one, because you want like the maximum coverage in a very matte finish. Um, and two, just be aware of how you apply it. I would definitely use a lighter brush to apply it versus a more dense brush uh, to apply it if you are applying it on top of liquid foundation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I'm grabbing the shade. What shades do I have here? So I have the shade Vienna and I'm just going to load my brush up. I'm really swirling it into the product. And I'm going to start in the center of my face and I'm just going to press and kind of blend down. This product does give a lot of coverage. So even though I'm using a big fluffy brush, it's still giving me good, good solid medium coverage. I wouldn't call this full. You can still see my skin through it, but it's definitely evening everything out and concealing um, some imperfections. So applying it with a brush like this is definitely the way to go if you're concerned about powder foundations making the texture in your skin look more apparent because it does apply it in the most light application. A big powder brush is the way to go. So I've applied the mineral foundation on the left side of my face and the right side is completely bare if you'd like to kind of compare the two to see the coverage and finish. Definitely a matte finish. Next, I'm going to show you what the application is like when you use a more dense brush. And this brush is actually just by e.l.f. It's very inexpensive. And I'm going to go in here and load up my brush and start in the center of my face. Now, I'm actually using this brush and just kind of pressing it into the skin. Because my skin is still supple from that moisturizer and that facial oil, um, I don't really have to work it into the skin. It's going to have something to almost adhere to and really set on the skin. Getting out here to the perimeters, I might kind of work in little circles just to blend things out a bit. Another benefit to this foundation is that it has silica in it, so it helps um, kind of smooth out pores and smooth out texture. In the skin, it's almost like line filling. So to recap tip number two, using a brush is really going to give a softer application and help minimize the appearance of texture in the skin. So I'm going to move on to bronzer and blush, and I'll be back with the last tip. So step three is how you set your foundation. Now, I am not one to always set with a setting spray. I'll be totally honest. Um, and not for any other reason than sometimes I just forget or I'm lazy or it's not around. But particularly when I'm using a powder foundation or lots of powder on the skin, setting with a setting spray can make such a difference in the way that it just sets into the skin. So I highly recommend using a setting spray after you have, a, have applied powder foundation and um, just simply spraying the makeup kind of liberally. You want to hold it away so that you're not like, you know, three inches from the face. Um, another tip that you can do is apply a setting powder with a slight bit of, I don't know if iridescence is the word, but a slight bit of glow. Um, once the setting spray is still on the skin and you can still feel that wetness. So I'm going to use the Miraness uh, Studio Magic BB Glow Powder. It's a very beautiful, lightweight, loose powder that has the most subtle 
subtle glow to it. Um, I don't even know if you can see it on the skin. It is so, so light. So it's not gonna leave this really glowy look to the skin or lots of shimmer or shine, but it is going to give the most subtle kind of uh, lit from within look. Now the key is getting it on when that setting spray is still a little bit wet on the skin. So you wanna kind of work quickly and I'm just gonna apply it with a brush that is very, very, very fluffy and loose. So it's not picking up a ton of product, just picking up a little bit and applying it. And that is going to help just give a little more of a natural kind of glow like to the skin because powder foundations can tend to look pretty matte and pretty flat. So this just gives a little bit more of a skin like appearance. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took away something that you didn't already know, whether it's one of the tips or all three of the tips. Let me know in the comment section below if you learned anything from this video. I think I wanna do some fun kind of like maybe smaller giveaways more frequently on my channel to people that leave comments sharing something that they learned from one of my videos. So um, if you think that's a good idea, which why wouldn't you, <laughs> more giveaways, let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Marinus, for partnering with me on this video, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.